Off to the races in week 16. Colts favored by nine over the Giants. Cynthia, who do you like in that one? I have the Colts winning 28-17. The play of Darius Leonard and the absence of Odell Beckham Jr. make an 11-point win for Indy. This is going to be a good one. Saints favored by five and a half at home. TD, as you know, James Conner not going to be playing in this game without Conner. How does that Steelers offense attack the Saints defense? Well, they've got a really good offensive line, a couple of pro bowlers on that offensive line. So just stay the course. Do what you've been doing. It doesn't matter who's back there running the ball. You have right there Jalen Samuels last week. Huge game. Listen, I'll go down there when we play. I didn't care who was back there. We're going to run the football, strength against strength, and see what happens. In terms of the Saints offense, they haven't scored a first half touchdown in two weeks. They still won both of those games, by the way. But how do they get that offense back on track, Cynthia? It's really about the middle of the field. In the games before the Patriots games, we saw the Steelers' defense be vulnerable to kind of the middle of the field and not adapting to different offenses. I don't think that happens in this one. I think that the Saints have the advantage in the middle of the field. I think it's not like the Patriots but more like Saints strength. I agree with you as we get to the picks. I'm going with the Saints. The Steelers can win this one, but they won't. Number one seed on the line for the Saints, and they are at home in the Dome. They are at home in the Dome, and I don't think the Steelers can win because Drew Brees, when he's at home, guys, 38 points he averages in the comfort of his warm Superdome home. Give me the Saints. People. Oh, the defense right now, New Orleans defense since week 10, only allowing 12.3 points per game, and they have 14 takeaways. Give me the New Orleans Saints to win this game. I'm kind of surprised we all agree. I Give have me a sweep. Saints, Saints 30, <laughs> Steelers 24, Demario Davis. I was going to point him out, but you kind of took my point on that, so I'm glad we I'm agree, sorry. sir. Yes. I think it's the Saints. Great minds to like. Look, the Saints make a difference in this one. are a better team at home. Now they're back. So, and also, too, an awesome one Sunday night with the Chiefs taking on the Seahawks in Seattle. Both teams coming off last second losses in week 15. Uh, the Chiefs, though, still the AFC's top playoff seed, while the Seahawks are currently the NFC's fifth seed. The Chiefs, by the way, the favorites on the road, two and a half. So, more important for the Hawks offense, would you say it's Russell Wilson or that number one? run game, TD, yeah, as I asked the running back yeah, that it, question. Yeah, it, it's the running game, <laughs> and, and they actually you're talking about two things here. That run game is what this offense really feeds off mm-hmm. of. It allows Russell Wilson to do what he's doing back there. So, obviously, if they can get that running game going, it makes everything more uh, easy for Russell. So, yeah. more important, give me that running game. Keep the ball away from Patrick Mahomes and no run question. the rock. As for the Seahawks defense, Cindy, I want to ask you this. The key for them to slow the Chiefs offense will be what? If I gave you like a blind study and said, which team is allowed eight yards per play on first down, which defense? I think most people would think it's the Chiefs defense, but it's actually the yeah. Seahawks defense. So you really have to keep the Chiefs offense, especially on first down, contained. Mm-hmm. That's the big key in this It's going to be hard to do. So with that, let's go with our pick, Cynthia. Who do you have in this Ooh, one? I have the Chiefs 28, the Seahawks 27. A very close game because of the Chiefs' ability to score quickly, score often, and score a multitude of different ways. Ooh, this is a tough one for me, but it I'm is. going with the yeah. Seahawks to win this game. They just have an offense that can play keep away from that high-powered offense, mm-hmm. and they don't turn the ball over a whole lot. So give me the Seahawks. Yeah, I'm a, a little surprised, actually, the Hawks are getting the points in this one because I think when Seattle is at home, the Chiefs' defense showing those holes, especially against the run, that number one rushing offense is welling and definitely waiting for them to play. This might be the game I'm most unsure of in week 16 because it's in Seattle, but all you have to do is look back two weeks ago, Kansas City took care of business against a run-heavy Ravens team. Give me the Chiefs to win in Seattle. Speaking of those Ravens, my friends, they're in L.A. taking on the Chargers Saturday exclusively on NFL Network. Both teams currently in the AFC playoffs as wild card teams. Baltimore, though, scrapping to keep those playoff hopes alive while the Chargers are already in, but they're chasing Kansas City in the AFC West. Chargers, four and a half point favorites in this game, TD. Melvin Gordon does expect to be back for this one. He's practiced fully all week. What are your expectations for him coming off that MCL stream? Yeah, that's good. I expect him to play well because if he's in there, Coach Lane is not going to put him in there at this time of the season because they need him for the long haul. You don't risk him putting him in right now. So if he's playing, I expect him to play well. All right, defensively, the Chargers love to run that dime package. They've run almost 60% of the time. That's six defensive backs in there. Uh, it doesn't always uh, benefit them in terms of playing against a run-heavy team. How do you see that playing out this way? Well, this is a run-heavy team. Yeah. They use the read option a ton, and you know one way to kind of counteract the read option? What is that? Really good defensive ends. Set the edge. Yeah. You know about yeah. that, right? Yeah. So that's what they have on this team. Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, 
that's not going to be a good formula for making the read option really work in their favor. Did you know the Ravens are the first team since the 1976 Steelers to rush for over 190 yards five weeks in yeah. a row? I read that somewhere. Do you remember yeah. the Steelers yeah. doing that? Uh, I, I was one year old <laughs> when the Steelers did that. Just Older than probably anybody at this table except uh, TD. I'm sorry, let me throw you in the bus. Uh, that being said, uh, I am taking the Chargers in this one. Listen, on the road, they've beaten Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and Seattle. This one is going to be in the comfy confines of the Stub Hub Center. Give me the Chargers. Uh, look, since taking over since week 11, Lamar Jackson hasn't faced a run defense better than 25th. And I think the Chargers' run defense is strong enough to keep him contained because he's definitely not going to be able to throw the ball accurately down the field. So give me the Chargers at home. Yeah, I think the Chargers, I'm going to pick them as well. The Chargers are going to probably try to score fast and make the Ravens play keep up, which plays mm -hmm. right into their hands, make Lamar Jackson throw the ball to turn it over. So give me the Chargers to win that one. Okay, so I'm a little surprised that we all agree because <laughs> I think it's closer in my mind than this, but I have the Chargers 27, Ravens 21. I think this is the game where number 33, Derwin James, shows us mm -hmm. why he's the defensive rookie there. Even though we like that other guy from the Colts a lot on this show a ton, but I think it's Derwin James in this one. Darius Leonard blowing up my phone. I, we love him. We love right Darius now. Leonard, too. Uh, okay, it is a great Saturday of football right here on NFL Network. Ravens and Chargers at 8. Before that, it's the Redskins and Titans at 4.30. Keep it locked on NFL Network all weekend. All right, Dan, Titans-Redskins starts off this edition of More or Less. TD, will those teams combine for more or less than 37 points? I am going to go with less than 37 points here. Both these teams aren't like high-powered offenses. And you know what? It's not going to be a close game. I think the Titans just sits on it, and the Washington Redskins mm -hmm. have zero faith in our offense. Well, you talk about Adrian Peterson's calling. I think maybe yeah. he has something to say about that. <laughs> well, I'm going call. with more than 37 total points in this game. I think the Titans are going to have a stronger showing than, you know, half that. And I think that the Redskins will keep it a little closer than we might imagine. I think that that is a like more. A 10 to 6 game more closer like than we might imagine. Ooh. Interesting. All right, same with that game. Derrick Henry will rush for... 100 yards more or less, TD. 100 yards? It's more than that. The man is averaging 204 yards in the last two games, and he is just balling out of control right now. I'm going to say more than 100 yards. Well, I'm going to go with less than 100 rushing yards, maybe scrimmage yards. I'd give him more than 100, but I'm going to keep it under 100. There's another running back on their team, too, just in case. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> They're allowed to have two. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a little bit more passing. The running back imagine. is always going to be biased. That's true. They're feeding the beast right now. Redskins have the second <laughs> yeah. worst run defense in the NFL since week 11. Uh, all right, Dan. Finally, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, they will combine for 620 yards passing TD more or less. I am going less with this one. This is not the old Drew Brees chunking at 400 you know, yards per game. So I'm going less. I know Ben is going to throw a little bit. Both teams have to be balanced to win this game, so I'm going less. All right, I told you my final score, 30-24. That means more than 620 yards because I think that those are passing touchdowns. I think we see kind of the back to offense. We went offense, and then the defense kind of caught up, and now we go offense again for trends league-wide. All right, we got another one with huge playoff implication. That is right. Eagles favored by two and a half at home against Houston. Nick Foles, by the way, coming off that big game against the Rams. What does he need to do? He's got another tough test against the Texans defense, TD. Yeah, it's pretty simple for him. All he has to do is, listen, he has to just run their offense, make the right decision when they go into the RPO, and he has to just don't get sloppy because remember early this year, he was getting sloppy, turning the ball over too much. If he does that, yeah. he'll be fine. And J.J. Watt, Whitney Merciless, and J.D. Clowney might have something to say mm. about pass rush. Not bad at all. Uh, the Eagles secondary, though, banged up. How will Deshaun and DeAndre torch them Sunday? I don't like the word torch. It's, like, <laughs> it's a math term because I like both teams, right? But ultimately, I think... DeAndre Hopkins' ability to run crisp routes and get himself open, especially against this extremely banged up secondary, is a huge difference maker in this game. Not only does he help himself in terms of getting into the end zone, but potentially even Demarius Thomas, too. All right, you don't like the word torch. Who do you like well, in this I, I game? Just, I just don't know what that means, right? Torch? I, I can define yards? it for you if okay. you'd like. <laughs> I have the Texans winning 24 23 in this one. I think it's ultimately Deshaun Watson's ability to escape the pressure that's going to be coming his way and that banged up secondary that make the difference in this one. I feel like I've seen this movie before. Nick Foles coming in late in the season, <laughs> making a playoff push for the Eagles. They've won three out of the last four, and there's a reason they are the favorites mm -hmm. in this game, TD. Uh, yeah. All right. 
I'm going with the Houston Texans. That defense, the fourth-ranked rush defense, they're going to make Nick Foles, the offense one-dimensional, make Nick Foles have to beat them. He's going to make some mistakes, so I'm going with the Houston Texans. I say one way you can neutralize Nuke Hopkins is don't give your quarterback time to air it out. When Deshaun Watson faces pressure, his passer rating is 40. No good. Wow. That's not good. Yeah, not that's good not good. So give me the Eagles at home. But with right. that, it is time for On the Hook, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. TD, you're on the hook win for an upset win oh, this week. Oh, I got myself a monster fish today. Uh oh, which one? That's a big one. That's a river fish right there. Seahawks <laughs> going to take down the Kansas City Chiefs. Listen, Seahawks are upset. They went into San Francisco yep. last week, lost that game. They're back at the link. They have revenge on their mind. This team is trying to get to the postseason. They're going to handle business at home. That sounds like a mad team to me. Dan. Yeah. Did he say river fish? A river monster fish is what I heard. <laughs> what on earth? All right, AFC playoff picture looks <laughs> like this. You see the two wild card teams, Chargers locked in, Ravens uh, still hoping to stay in the playoff mix once the season ends. Let's talk championship chances now, okay? Patriots, of course, lose to the Steelers last week, and their chances to win it all took a massive hit in your estimation, dropping almost in half to under 9%. Now, these, of course, are chances to win the entire kit and caboodle, the Super Bowl, not just to get there, right? Correct. This is to win everything, and here's why. One, they dropped out of having a bye. The Patriots have had a bye seven times in the Tom Brady era when they've made it to the Super Bowl. So that's a big deal. And second, that they're, they're without a bye and without home field advantage, that really takes a huge chunk out of their ability to win everything. And certainly not having Josh Gordon for the rest of the year doesn't help as well. All right, on to the NFC. Not a whole lot changing here. Saints and Rams 1 and 2 uh, by your count. Let's talk about this team right here. The Chicago Bears, 10% chance to win it all, and they're taking on the 49ers this week. How do you see that playing out? Look, the 49ers had an unexpectedly awesome game against the Seahawks. Per my math, I was wrong last week about that one. But Khalil Mack and their ability to bring pressure from all over this line, Akeem Hicks from everywhere, it's just going to be too much for the Niners. I have the Bears winning 26-21. Winning by five, so Santa has a lump of coal for the Niners. Let's see what Dave Damashek has to stuff your stockings. It is time for 60 seconds. Hi and hello and season's greetings, football fans. Dave Damashek here. Minnesota's up in Detroit. Vikes win it by 10, but does anyone really win when two NFC North teams play under a dome? You're in the NFC North. Tear that roof off and let the cold air and some dignity in. At least do it for Christmas, you Grinches. Sheesh. Steelers and Saints, black and gold versus gold and black. Hall of Fame QBs and all pro wide receivers on either side. Lots in common. Look at the detail. But the difference here, Alvin Kamara, who scores twice in a six-point New Orleans win. Chargers hosting Lamar Jackson and his pals on a SoCal Saturday night. Both teams red hot and wanting wins, but you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometime, you just might find you get the one seed. And it's a Sunday night battle for the soul of pro football, not to mention playoff seeding. The Run Bay Seahawks host the high-flying Chiefs. KC wins it by eight, but in the spirit of the holiday, maybe the Seahawks could wear that action green and the Chiefs could wear their all red. Festive. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some eggnog with my name on it. Nog. All right, more Freeland game scores and quick picks. Let's start with the Falcons, Panthers. Falcons 24, Panthers 19. Keep an eye on Julio Jones in this one. He's a game time decision. You're going to want to wait till right up before the game starts to really pick that one. Bucks, Cowboys. Cowboys big, 28 20 over the Bucks. It's Zeke and his ability to break tackles is going to be a difference maker. Huge game for him. I like that. Finally, let's talk Packers, Jets. Another one with a question. 24-21 right now in favor of the Packers. Keep an eye on Aaron Rodgers. He says he's going to play, but just keep an eye on this one right up until the game starts. It's going to be uncertain. All right, get your notes app out. Take these down. Cynthia's <laughs> score predictions. Titans over the Redskins, 24-16. Browns up and the Bengals, 26-19. And it's the Dolphins over the Jags, 23 18. How about a little high scoring, low scoring with Cynthia? Let's start with the Bills and the Patriots. Freeland, go. I have a high scoring game here. Patriots win 31 17. You're looking at James White, but you should also factor in Sony Michelle. Both of them have big games. 
Next up, Vikings and the Lions. Ah, another high-scoring game. Vikings win this one 26-21. You're looking at Adam Thielen because I think he's the key in this one. Beware the running game for the Lions. The run defense is better than expected, so it's Adam Thielen that gets them the win. Okay, and finally, the uh, Rams and the Cardinals get back on track game for the Rams. This is a low-scoring game. Rams win it 28-17. You're looking at Aaron Donald. He's going to show you in this game against that O-line why he's the defensive player of the year. All right, time for TD's Lock of the Week. Go, TD. My Lock of the Week is the all of a sudden hot Cleveland Browns taking on the Bengals. When this game, this team still has a slight chance to make the playoffs, they will get the job done and take down the Bengals. That is my Lock of the Week. Good stuff, TD. All right, it is time for pick six. Six games. Cynthia giving points to each pick. Most confident, of course, gets six. Your least gets one. Let's start with this first one. Ravens on the road taking on the Chargers. We all have the Chargers. Yeah, that's kind of surprising, although this one is my number five of the ones we're picking on here. Yep, I like it, though. Uh, the Giants facing the Colts. You have the Colts winning pretty big. My model loves O-lines and good defenses. The Colts have both. They're the six. You have them winning by 11. The Texans taking on the Eagles. This one is technically an upset. Sure. That defense against this offense is a greater than sign in this one, but it's the number two. Lamar Miller, a game time decision in case you have him Dante on fantasy. Dante Foreman could be a good pick there. Broncos on the road facing the Raiders. Okay, so unfortunately it might be the last game in Oakland, but I have the away team winning this one. It's the number three. You have the Broncos winning by four. Steelers playing the Saints. This is a good one. Drew Brees back in home. Yep, this one. Yep. We're going to see Drew Brees good against the Blitz. Pretty much, yep. Okay. <laughs> Chiefs playing the Seahawks. This is another good one because playing at Sea Link is not like playing at home at Arrowhead, but you have the Chiefs winning. But look at this. That's the one. That one's the least certain of all of these six. She has the Chiefs winning by one. One point. Yeah. So that is close. And here is your recap. Of course, the Colts are your most confident pick. Yeah. They Again, the Giants are going to not have Odell Beckham. Your Seahawks losing to the Chiefs, your least confident. Good stuff. Okay, for the first time all season, we agree on almost every game this week, which actually makes it pretty scary. There is some serious us. bulletin board material here. Somebody uh, take the Ravens. We don't agree on the <laughs> Eagles and the Texans, and we don't agree on the Chiefs and the Seahawks. Uh, the smart money here, obviously, Somebody on the take Chiefs. Pittsburgh. Uh, but if you want the Seahawks, Aaron and TD agree with you. Uh, it is time right. for our Survivor Pool picks. Dan, you are tied with me, which is doing pretty well. You're 11 and <laughs> yeah. 4, yeah. so well done. Why don't you go ahead and start us off? I hit a little bit of a, of a skid. I'm going to go with the Titans uh, over my Redskins. Titans chasing the playoffs. Derrick Henry chasing his first 1,000-yard season. I know the Redskins won last week, but I still feel like they're trending down. Titans trending up. I am picking the Cowboys because their run defense is good. The Bucks run offense, not so good. And I say Amari Cooper sees the end zone. Give me the like Cowboys. That. I haven't picked them yet. I like that. I'm picking the Browns because TD told me he's his lock. I also have them yes. as my lock in my <laughs> model, too. So I'm going Smart. with my man here. All right, here we go. The oh. moment we've all been waiting for. All right, here we go. The let's go, reveal. let's go. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, indeed.